We spent a lot of time talking about the structure of convergence proofs based on the definition of convergence, but there's a subtlety in the definition itself worth exploring in more depth. Here's the definition of convergence. Notice that this defines not just the word converge, but the entire phrase converge to a real number s. This means that in every proof of convergence that we've done so far, we not only had to determine that the sequence converged, but we also had to know exactly what it was converging to. This can sometimes be difficult as there are many sequences where we don't have an explicit form of the value it converges to. This is especially true of sequences that result from considering infinite sums. In order to get around this difficulty, we are going to introduce another definition. Definition. A sequence S sub n of real numbers is called a Cauchy sequence, provided that for each epsilon greater than zero, there exists a number capital N, such that little m little n greater than capital N implies the absolute value of S sub little n minus S sub little m is less than epsilon. Augustin Louis Cauchy is an important French mathematician who did a lot of work in the early to mid 1800s in a variety of mathematical topics. We won't go into his biography here, but you're encouraged to read about him on the internet. Let's compare these two definitions to see the similarities and differences. As we can see, the setup of both definitions is the same. They are both properties of a sequence of real numbers. When we get to the conditions, we see that they are very similar to each other. Both conditions are of the form, for each x, there exists y, such that z. In fact, the x and y for both of these definitions are identical. For each epsilon greater than zero, there exists a number capital N. This means that the entire difference lies in the condition. Let's take a look at a couple pictures to make the comparison. The condition for a convergent sequence is that all the terms beyond a certain point are close to the limit. The condition for a Cauchy sequence is that all the terms beyond a certain point are close to each other. An important theorem of real analysis is that a sequence is convergent if and only if it's Cauchy. This means that the two ideas represent the same thing, even though they look a little different. The primary benefit of this is that it allows us to know that sequences converge without having to know what they converge to. We will look at the proof of that statement in class. In that proof, we will be using the concept of lim sup and lim inf of a sequence. I believe these are the most non-intuitive, intuitive ideas that we see in this real analysis course, so we will spend a moment looking at their definitions. Definition. Let S sub n be a sequence in the real numbers. We define the lim sup of S sub n to be the limit as capital N goes to infinity of the sup of the set of S sub n such that n is greater than capital N. And we define lim inf of S sub n to be the limit as capital N goes to infinity of the inf of the set of S sub n such that n is greater than capital N. We will focus on lim sup of S sub n. We can see that this is the limit of a sequence, and the sequence is built from the suprema of certain sets. Let's take a look at what all of this means. Here is an image of a sequence. What is the set of S sub n such that n is greater than capital N? If we pick some value capital N, we're looking at all the terms in the sequence that come after that point. We want the supremum of this set, which is the least upper bound. We then want to take the limit as n approaches infinity, which means we're going to move n to the right and do this again. Notice that sometimes the supremum stays the same, and other times it drops down. You can imagine the limb slope of a sequence as being the height of the highest point that's always in front of you. For example, if you had a sequence that behaved like a sine curve, no matter what you do, you know that there's always going to be a peak of height 1 in front of you. This means the limb slope of that sequence is 1. The limb inf is the same idea, but we're looking at the lowest point that's always in front of you. In class, we'll see that these limits exist and use them to prove that Cauchy sequences and convergent sequences are the same thing. 